This video will go over general tips and tricks for Silent Hill 2, which may be useful for new players. And at the end of the video, we'll go over a few suggestions for live streaming the game. When starting a new game of Silent Hill 2, you are asked what action and riddle difficulty to play the game through. The action difficulty dictates how strong, resilient, and fast the enemies will be. If this is your first time playing Silent Hill 2, it is recommended to play the game on easy or normal action difficulty so as to better enjoy the experience. Hard action difficulty is only recommended for a subsequent playthrough, if you want the added challenge. Riddle difficulty dictates how cryptic the puzzles will be. Choose a difficulty for this depending on how much you want your brain to be twisted. Items in Silent Hill 2 do not glow or flash like in other horror games. Instead, James will turn his head and look at any item he can pick up. As you play, keep an eye on where James is looking. He can help you find something you might have missed. James will automatically use keys on normal, locked doors. If the key is used to unlock an unusual door or a special lock, you must select and use the key from the inventory screen. James cannot use keys, see items, or read memos or his own map in dark areas without a light source. Be sure your flashlight is turned on in dark areas to read or use items. You can deliver a final blow to enemies by stomping them. After incapacitating an enemy on the ground, go up to them and press the action button to perform a stomp. Silent Hill 2 uses a combination of fixed and free-floating cameras throughout the game. If you're in an area that's using a free-floating camera, you can press the search camera button to position the camera behind you. Keeping the search camera button held down will allow you to look around to better explore your surroundings. Riddles and memos that you have found can be reread at any time by selecting memos from the inventory screen. You can zoom in and out of maps. While zoomed in, you can move the map around for a better look. And when zoomed out, you can flip the pages to view other maps you have acquired. As you explore, James will mark on the map. He will mark things such as broken doors, locked doors, open doors, and areas of interest. If you're stuck at a part of the game, double check your map for areas you might have missed, or view what items you have in your inventory for a clue. You can also examine certain items in your inventory for additional information about them. Explore the game's options menu to fine-tune your experience. For example, you can set it to where Janes will run automatically. Or, if you don't like tank controls, you can change the movement style to be directional. At the end of the day, this is an old-school horror game. So as you play, be sure to examine everything. A big part of this game's personality is the flavor text you'll read as you examine all sorts of things. Lastly, here are some tips if you decide to stream Silent Hill 2. While the noise filter is iconic for the game, it can degrade the visual quality of the stream to your audience. This is due to the constant movement of the noise grain on the screen in relation to your stream's bitrate. A low bitrate will introduce visual artifacts and compression if the noise filter is active. For streaming, consider disabling the noise filter from the game's options menu.
In regards to audio, Silent Hill 2 allows you to adjust the game's background music and sound effect levels, but does not allow you to change the dialogue or FMV levels. So the dialogue and FMVs will always play at 100% volume. If you'd like to adjust the game's audio, it is recommended to leave the BGM and sound effect levels up, and reduce the game's overall volume through Windows Volume Mixer or through your streaming software. We hope these general tips and tricks will help you along with playing Silent Hill 2. Enjoy the game, and have fun.